i-netradio.com i-netradio.com Dobry den, idrabropa jalabat. This is Springtime in Moscow with your host, James Tuthill and I'm Stephen Simpson. We've got some Russian with a little American and we're serious with a little humor. So, Jim, what is happening in the world today? Steve, thank you for the beautiful introduction. I'm Jim Tuthill and this is Springtime in Moscow. Today, we have our special regularly scheduled show cooking in the studio kitchen with Narisa Waterman and today we are going to Morocco Morocco for some Casablanca recipes and specialties I want to remind everybody that we're here on i-netradio.com 24 hours a day, seven days a week, broadcasting from the Gold Coast of Florida between South Beach, Miami Beach, and to the North Palm Beach in beautiful, tropical Jupiter, Florida. We have a regularly scheduled brand new show every weekday at 1, 4, 7, and 10 p.m. Eastern Standard in New York time. And of course, that is when Narisha's show is going to play. We also have the Classical Music Hour with Christina Botnari every weekday for at 12 noon and 8 p.m. Eastern Standard New York time. I want to say hello not only to Narisa Waterman, our fabulous cook and host, but guess who dropped by the studio? Robert DeLuce. Narisa and Robert, how are you doing? Hi, James. Hi, Robert. Hi, hi James. Hi, Narisa. Good to hear from you guys. Good to hear from you guys. This is beautiful. I love having you with me. This it's is great. great. Thanks, James. This is great. It just this makes my day when we can get together here in the i net radio kitchen. All right, Narisa, give us a little bit of a background of Morocco. Where is it? What are we doing with it? And why are we so interested in their food? Well, I thought it would be a nice exotic place to take our listeners to. Morocco is one of the most diverse countries in Africa. A lot of high mountains, beautiful deserts, beautiful people, exotic spices, and I figured, hey, why not Morocco? So that's where I'm taking you guys today. Oh, beautiful. And you know, the capital is Rabat. And I knew a beautiful woman from Rabat. She was beautiful, beautiful. And uh, Casablanca is the most famous city, but Rabat is much prettier and much nicer. And uh, Casablanca, of course, was the title of the famous movie. And we have the ancient winding alleyways, and uh, it is beautiful. You know, Narisa, they have a combination over there of Moroccan and North African cooking together with French cooking because the French... Uh, protected Morocco for about a hundred years and a lot of French cooking is mixed with the North Africa cooking it's really beautiful beautiful okay yes well we're gonna love it and it's a hot vacation spot you know she was always trying to get me to go to Morocco but I just never made it over there but you never this is maybe as close as I'm ever gonna get to Rabat right here on this show. So let's get the flavor. Okay, Narisa, take us off to Morocco's national drink. Well, of course, you know me. I have to introduce you to the national drink, and their national drink is tea. Mint tea, to be exact. It's mint tea, and it's a mixture of a green tea, and it's a very interesting process. And they call it the Bieber whiskey, jokingly, because, you know, it's something that you can't go to Morocco and not have mint tea. Mm. So, <laughs> and of course, after we're done with the mint tea, I'm also going to make you a mint tea cocktail. Mm. Because, you know, you can't go to Narisa's kitchen and not have a cocktail. Yep. So first, I'm going to start you guys off with um, the mint tea. So we're going to start with loose gunpowder green tea. 
And if you don't have a Moroccan pot, any teapot would do. Really? Yes, now this is loose. This isn't in one of those little bags, is it? This is loose green tea. You see that, Very Robert? Yes. I always thought tea came in a bag, but here it is, scattered all over the table here. I think she's got a filter in her pots. Isn't yes. that correct, Marisa? Yes. Yes, I do. Mm. And we have beautiful mint leaves. And if you can't find the spearmint, you can use peppermint. And if you cannot find the Moroccan mint tea, Sometimes you're able to find it, depends where you live and what's available in your farmer's market. But any mint tea leaves will do. But we're using fresh mint. That's very important. And we have um, a half a cup of sugar here. And you're going to sweeten to your taste. But usually this traditional mint tea has a sweet taste to it. I tend to like it sweet. So we're going to fill this beautiful pot with two to three cups of boiling water and we have our loose green tea here and we're just going to leave it for about 30 seconds and then we're going to swish it around the pot we're cleaning the the tea leaves here so we're going to swish it around and we're going to discard the water not the tea leaves just the water and then we're going to add more boiling water to the teapot and then we're going to add our gunpowder green tea and we're going to add our sugar and we're going to let this steep for a while for maybe one to two minutes Gunpowder gun green tea. Gunpowder gun green tea. Hmm, wonder where that comes from. Gunpowder. I have. <laughs> it's an interesting name. I don't know of any substitution that may work. I've always used gunpowder green tea when it comes to making the traditional Moroccan mint tea. Now, Narisa, up in Long Island, New York, everybody grew a little bit of mint in their gardens and I think it was fairly easy to grow it just so you just sort of it just came out of the ground Robert it, yeah. you didn't have to do a darn thing to it all of a sudden it just appeared but Narisa I... you say that when mint is scarce you can also use one of my favorites bitter wormwood also known as absinthe which I know about or Sheba mm -hmm. Whew, what's warm, bitter wormwood? Sounds good. Mm. Well, I always make sure I have mint on, on hand. I actually have two mint pots in my um, window. So yes. It's never scarce in my household. But yes, that is a good substitute. Yes. So. Now, where did we get these mint leaves? Did we have to get these from California or somewhere? From your local farmer's market. Yeah, but I mean, I wonder where they got them. Because you don't usually see that here in Florida too much. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. But they got them. God bless the Du Bois Farms. Now, Narisa, go easy on that sugar. When I go into these southern restaurants, they always say, oh, do you want sweet tea? And man, they can really make it sweet. So please go easy on that sugar. A half a cup of sugar you've got here in front of me. Woo! I did say sweet to taste. It's optional. And I know I will go less on the um, the sugar. Yes. But basically, it's, it's a simple process. It's a quick process. One teaspoon of gunpowder to every six ounce of hot water. And with the tea, you let it steep for like one to three minutes. And you have your mint tea, which is usually served to every guest. Every restaurant, like I said, it's their national drink. You cannot go to Morocco and not have their traditional mint tea. It's mm. just not. Well, it's starting to boil. I see these little bubbles bubbling. And uh, I guess it's one teaspoon of loose tea for every six ounces of hot water. Is that it? Correct. Beautiful. Beautiful. I guess our pot was clean already. We, we, we try to be clean here in the i-net radio studio. We're, we're using the traditional glass pot because we don't have the, the traditional metal tea Moroccan pot. I couldn't locate it. It was no. like impossible to find. No. So I'm sure if I had more time, I would have been able to find one. So that process, thank goodness, was eliminated. If you had I told me, I would have driven down to Boca Raton today or Delray Beach and gotten that because I know somebody that has a Moroccan teapot. Yes. Oh. I don't know if she would have given it to me, Robert. You might have had to fight. Might have had to fight for that one. You know, you don't always leave on the best of terms, but I would have tried to get that teapot. Yep. Larissa, what's good about this kind of tea here with the loose uh, tea leaves is um, 
you actually can drink it after it hits boiling, correct? Unlike tea bags where you've got to wait, what, five minutes? Well, yeah, like I said, maybe 60 seconds to maybe two minutes. You can let it steep. Mm. It depends on how strong you want it. Yes. And we know that Jim does not want it sweet, but correct. Okay. You can drink it right it's now. boiled. Now what do we do? Well, we're going to pour it in these beautiful glasses that we have here. Yes, we do have nice glasses. We may not have a Moroccan tea pot, pot but we have beautiful glasses. Yes. Beautiful glasses. This and is going to be great. And you know, tea is good for you if you have a little cold or something. Do you even want sugar, James? Should we just eliminate the sugar? Well, I, what, uh, none for me. What about you, no, I'm going to go straight. I'm just going to go yeah. straight tea. Straight tea for both of us. No sugar. We're going to eliminate the sugar because I am actually not going to participate in this tea, you guys, because I want to try the Moroccan mint cocktail. <laughs> well, so as, wait a minute. We can have both, Robert. Yeah, why wake yeah. up? Why wake us up just yeah. to uh, give us liquor later? Yeah. <laughs> so as you can see, I have my favorite, favorite mason jar shaker. Mm. And I'm going to do a Moroccan mint tea cocktail. So as you can see, four whole mint leaves. We have four ounces of sweetened iced tea, two ounces of vodka, and I'm going to put in a splash of lime juice into the shaker with our ice, and we're going to shake, 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 pour into this beautiful chill glass, and I'm going to garnish with the mint springs. And over here, I have some lemon and lime wedges, and I'm just going to garnish this with a lime wedge. And this is my Moroccan mint tea cocktail. Now, I see you're using standard vodka from Russia. Yes. Yes, I kept that. You know, I this started off as Russian radio, and we used to have vodka every day in the studio. But then when we sort of slowed down on the Russian thing, we stopped drinking on the set. So we've got some left here. We, we still do the Russian dance, though. Yeah, we still dance Russian. Yep. Now, this looks pretty okay. good, uh, Narisa. This looks pretty good. I like this. I like this. Well, should I make one for you and um, Robert as well? Yes. Thank you. <laughs> I mean, because you, you are drinking the, the traditional mint tea. So do you actually want both? Yeah. Yeah. We, I, yes. I've got a cold, and I don't want to give it back to James. Right. And that vodka. But you know, Marisa, uh, Marisa one thing puzzles me. Moroccan and vodka? Mm -hmm. You know, I don't know. Vodka is more of an Eastern European affair. Well, that's the ingredient. Vodka. So I that's it. A you got this straight from the Moroccan authorities. Okay. Yeah, that is one of their drinks. And there is a, um, another one. Yes. Do we, what, you know should we even make another drink? Maybe we should just stick with the Moroccan cocktail and the Moroccan tea and start cooking. How about that? Well, at the end of the show, we could make it. What do you think? Well, we, yeah, yeah. The, the vodka kind of <laughs> reacts pretty quick. Yeah, the end of, after the, we go off the air, uh, Narisa, I hate to tell all of our listeners, things get exciting in the studio with all this, all these drinks. Yes. <laughs> Yes. Okay, we're going to start cooking. We're okay, gonna start we're going to start drinking. Here's to you, Robert. Here's to you, James. Thank you. Okay. And Thank you. Enjoy. Thank you. Here's to we're your health, start. Robert. To you. Thank you. Happy, Marissa, here's to you happy days. As we say in Russia, Nostrovia. As we say in Morocco, Bashkabushka. Bashkabushka. <laughs> Bashkabushka. We used to say that when I took this woman out. Bashkabushka. <laughs> Okay, yeah, I think yeah, we're going to just stop at this cocktail, and we're going to start with the couscous. Okay. Now, we're going to make two couscous today. I'm going to make a simple, quick couscous. It'll take you 10 minutes or less, and I'm going to make the traditional couscous. The traditional couscous is not for the faint of heart. It is um, time-consuming. It is a labor of love. So I'm going to read the ingredients to you first this traditional couscous is um it's loaded with slow cooked lamb poached vegetables and spices and a generous amount of cumin so we're going to start with the ingredients for the lamb broth we have mm -hmm. a half a cup of olive oil plus three tablespoons for sauteing two large onions which are thinly sliced we have a pinch of saffron maybe about 30 threads we have a tablespoon of ground ginger one stick of cinnamon, one tablespoon of ground coriander, one tablespoon of paprika, 
two tablespoons of freshly cracked black pepper, two tablespoons of kosher salt, six medium cloves of garlic crushed and coarsely chopped, and we have three pounds of lamb shanks. We have two tomatoes, which is cut in very large pieces, and we have two small turnips, and we have one large red bell pepper, which is cored, seeded, and is cut. We have one bay leaf, 10 sprigs of fresh cilantro, and we have 10 sprigs of flat leaf parsley tied with a kitchen twine. This is for the broth. We're going to also make something called a harissa, which is a hot sauce or it's a kind of a paste. It's used in North African cuisine and it's made from chili peppers, paprika, and olive oil. And the recipe for the harissa is two roasted red bell peppers, five dried red chilies, which we soaked in hot water for 20 minutes. We also have two cloves of garlic, two teaspoons of ground cumin, a half teaspoon of brown coriander, one teaspoon of kosher salt, and a half a cup of extra virgin olive oil. So this is the recipe for the harissa. And then for the couscous and the seasoned water in which we're going to cook this couscous, the ingredients for that is two cups of flour, and we're going to mix that with two cups of water. We have four cups of couscous, three tablespoons of extra virgin olive oil. We have 30 threads of saffron, a half a teaspoon of ground turmeric, a teaspoon of ground cumin, two teaspoons of kosher salt, a fourth teaspoon of freshly ground black pepper, and we have a 15 ounce can of chickpeas, and we're going to drain the um, chickpeas. We have a half a cup of golden raisins, a half a teaspoon of ground cinnamon, and two tablespoons of unsalted butter. We're also going to caramelize the onions for this dish. And we have three tablespoons of olive oil, two large onions thinly sliced, two tablespoons of ground cinnamon, two tablespoons of freshly ground black pepper. We have kosher salt to taste. However, I probably will be using one teaspoon and two tablespoons of granulated sugar and one cup of golden raisin. And this is for caramelizing the onions. And for our vegetables, we have eight baby carrots peeled and cut in um, half inches, one large sweet potato, one pound of winter squash. We have a, a medium white cabbage, six baby eggplants, and four small zucchinis. And these are the ingredients that we need for today for our vegetables, our caramelized onion, our couscous, our harissa, and our lamb broth. So we're going to start. Are we ready? We're ready. Yes, we're ready. We are totally in suspense okay. here because you are in charge on this one, Narisa. Okay, so for the broth in a large bowl, we're going to combine a half a cup of the olive oil with the onions, the spices, the salt, the garlic, and we're going to mix these ingredients very well. We're going to heat the remaining three tablespoons of the olive oil in a stock pot over a medium high heat. Now the shanks, they're already seasoned with salt and pepper, and now we're going to brown them on all sides in batches because we don't want to overcrowd the pan. So we're going to brown these in batches. And then we're going to reduce the heat to medium and then add the seasoned onion mixture. And then we're going to stir occasionally until the spices release their flavors. And that's going to take about five minutes. And, you know, after the five minutes, we're going to, you know, add the tomatoes, the turnips, the red pepper, and we're going to stir to coat, coat and coat until the tomatoes are soft. And that's going to take another five to eight minutes. We're going to add our bay leaves, we're going to add our, our herbs, and then we're going to add water to cover, which is about 10 to 12 cups. We're going to cover the pot and bring to a boil. And then we're going to lower the heat to simmer and cook. We're going to stir occasionally until the lamb pulls apart from the bone easily. And that is going to take about two hours. So that might not be something that we're going to eat right now on no, air. Oh, I guess we're not going to eat that right now. Now, lamb is a big thing over in Morocco, isn't it? Yes, it is. Yes, it is. Yes. So um, after it's all cooked, we're going to transfer it to the platter, and we're going to continue to simmer the broth until it's full of flavor. And we're going to reduce the broth to about eight cups. And we're going to add salt and pepper to taste. I know how you feel about salt, James. That's okay. It's to taste. <laughs> and we're going to discard the herbs and the bay leaf and the cinnamon stick, and we're going to spoon off the fat off the surface. So 
while that is cooking the broth, we're going to let the broth cook. We're going to move over and we're going to make the harissa. We're going to coarsely chop the roast peppers and we're going to put them in a blender. We're going to add the chilies, not the seeds, the garlic, the cumin, the coriander, and the salt. And with the blender running, we're going to add the olive oil in a stream until the mixture becomes smooth. And that's about 30 seconds. And then we're going to transfer the harissa to a boil and stir in the chili seeds. And that is your harissa. That is our nice spicy chili paste that we're going to add to this mixture later on. Now for the couscous. This is a different way of cooking couscous than I'm used to. They use a method called the fluff method. And they use um, steam to cook the couscous. So here we go. We're going to have in our medium bowl, we're going to mix the flour and the water to make a thin paste. And we're going to set aside. Here we have, as you can see, um, three strips of cheesecloth long enough to wrap around twice around the rim of the bowl. We're going to put the couscous in this very large bowl. We're going to cover the grains with cold water and we're going to switch to remove the, the starch. Then we're going to drain. We're going to let the couscous rest for about five minutes. Meanwhile, we're going to start making our seasoned water and we're going to mix the oil the saffron, the turmeric, the cumin, the salt, the pepper, and three cups of water. And we're going to fill this stock pot with at least two inches of plain water. Um, and we're going to bring it to a boil. Now, as the plain water is heating up, scoop up some of the couscous with your hands. <laughs> yes, your wow. hands. <laughs> we're going to rub the grains together lightly to separate them and break them apart in, 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 with any lumps. The couscous will feel dry, so we're going to sprinkle a bit of seasoned water and continue to separate and fluff the couscous with our hands. We're letting the grains rub against one another and drill it back into the bowl. We're sprinkling a bit more of the liquid and we're continuing to rub so the couscous starts to feel moist, but not wet. No liquid should accumulate in the bowl. If liquid is accumulating in the bowl, you're using too much liquid. So we're doing a steam and fluff method we're cooking the couscous. So we're setting the colander over the simmering water and we're sprinkling the couscous into the colander without pressing it on the grains. Wet the long strip of cheesecloth, then dip it into the flour water paste. Wrap the cheesecloth twice around the gap between the colander and the stock pot to steam. To, you know, we're going to make a seal because we're using the steam to actually cook the couscous. Now, while the couscous is steaming, we're going to heat the olive oil. And here now we're going to start caramelizing our, um, our onions. We're going to throw in a few slices of onion, cinnamon, pepper, salt, sugar, and raisins. And we're going to stir and we're going to cook for at least 20 minutes until the onions are caramelized. We're going to reduce the heat and we're going to carefully unwrap the hot cheese cloth around our colander now. So now we're going back to the couscous and, and we're going to put this couscous in a large bowl. We're breaking up the clumps with a spoon now. When the couscous is cool enough to handle, we're going to fluff again with our hands. And we're going to moisten the couscous gradually by adding liquid to it. And we're going to repeat this method again for a second time. And after we complete this method for the second time, we're going to put our, our couscous in a dish. And we're going to go back to our veggies and our lamb. And when they're completely cooked, we're going to dump the veggies and the lamb in the middle of the couscous because as you can see we're going to put like a little hole in the middle of the couscous and that is the traditional way of making couscous it's not as easy as the 10 minute couscous that i'm usually making when i go to the supermarket but that is the traditional moroccan couscous. okay wow it's a lot of <laughs> a lot of work to make a lot those. of work uh, how, yes, I, like well, how would you describe the Finnish couscous. I mean, what exactly is it when you're finished with it? It's going to be a beautiful, flavorful, like, it, to me, personally, it reminds me of a stew. Yes. And, um, but it takes time, the seasons and all the veggies and the onions, everything has to marry. And the only way you can get the really true appreciation for all the labor of love into this dish and everything that is going in, it takes time to cook. It has to simmer. And, you know, like I said, between two and a two and a half hours, we'll be able to eat the traditional couscous. couscous. 
And you're yeah. right. It really is a stew from looking at what I'm seeing here. It's a stew. Very interesting. Okay. However, I think I will go back to the quick method, which I appreciate so much more now, which is simple. One cup of couscous, one cup of water. You bring the water to a boil in a saucepan. You stir in the couscous. You remove from the heat, and you let stand for five minutes. That is couscous that I am used to. Less than well, 10 minutes. Narisa, <laughs> I even have a simpler couscous re uh, recipe. Really? Uh, oh, yeah. Really I have two cups of vegetable broth or chicken broth, two uh -huh. tablespoons of butter, and two cups of couscous. Oh, I've never tried putting butter in the couscous before. No. No, I've never done that before. Yeah, okay. you bring the broth to a boil in a medium saucepan, and then we add the butter. We've got two cups of vegetable broth, and we stir until the butter is dissolved. And while the broth is boiling, we add the couscous. And you, this okay. is what you do. You turn off the heat, cover it, and let it stand for 10 minutes, and fluff it with a fork and serve it. Boy, Robert, that it's is quick. It's quick and it looks tasty. But yeah. Narissa, maybe you want to explain what couscous is to people that aren't actually watching the show today. Yeah, what? Go through this couscous again with us. Okay, couscous. It's um, it's a grain. It's not rice. It's not pasta. It's kind of um, it's a grain that is a staple in Morocco, and they use it to make their traditional Moroccan dish. And like I said, there's the simple method and there's the long-winded method of making the traditional couscous. And usually what we're doing is we're flavoring the couscous itself with um, whether it's the broth from a vegetable broth or a beef broth or a lamb broth. But that's the main, I guess, the star of the show, the couscous. And then we add different things to it. Some add raisins and apricots and beef, whatever. It depends on what region you're from determines the type of traditional couscous that you have. But this is their traditional couscous in regards to with the harissa and the lamb. Because like, like we said before, a lamb is a big thing in Morocco. Now, we went to the Middle Eastern store in West Palm Beach for this couscous. You just can't get this granulated grains in any store. What do well, you there think, are some, Harissa? There are some couscous that you can buy in our, um, your regular supermarket if you go into your, um, your I guess, your authentic aisle in your mm. supermarket. There, um, there are some brands that are popular in the supermarket with a quick method in regards to couscous, which I'm familiar with. I can't think of the name brands right now. But couscous is quite popular. It is popular. So you should be able to find couscous in your soup. Now, would you consider couscous a side dish to, to, the, uh, to the stew that we had going before? Um, I would consider it a side dish. I think so. Yeah. Yeah. I it's it's pretty starchy, side. huh? Yeah. Yes. And it's filling a meal on its own. Yeah. You don't need any to go with this. But, um, this is one of their traditional family, uh, I guess, meals. Couscous. It certainly is. But now, like I said, it's a little love. <laughs> now, how does all of this relate to tagine or tagines? Oh, okay. Tagine is a clay pot. Yeah. Where they do most of their cooking in regards to um, beef or any kind of lamb or chicken or stew. So that's where the uh, comes from. So we have two recipes, and one, we're going to use the tangine pot. Another pot, one, we're going to use a slow cooker. So we have a vegetarian tangine dish. And um, like I said, in Morocco, it's very popular. It's a clay pot, beautiful clay pots, by the way. Yeah, I, I'm so, told yeah. that they serve this in roadside cafes and even the finest dining rooms in Rabat. Yes. Mm. So, you know, they cook the stew and they cook the, the meat till it's tender and the vegetables and everything's just blended and it's in this pot and it's beautiful. Mm. So we're, we're going to start with the vegetable tangine. So here we have three tablespoons of olive oil, one small onion diced, one tablespoon of garlic mince, one tablespoon of ginger grated. We have three cups of squash and one can of garbanzo beans. 
Okay, now, cables. squash is like zucchini, right? Yes. And garbanzo beans. I haven't had those in years, Robert. Mm. Don't they bounce? Yes, you can bounce them. <laughs> Mm-hmm. Okay, is that the Moroccan cheese? Okay, they bounce. Okay, and then we have two tablespoons of ground turmeric, two tablespoons of ground cumin, two tablespoons of ground cor coriander. I have a teaspoon of ground cinnamon. We're going to use vegetable broth because this is a vegetarian tangine. And we're going to have one tablespoon of harissa, one and a half tablespoon of honey, a third cup of dry apricots. We're going to chop these, a third cup of raisins, a third cup of silvered almonds, and we have preserved lemon. And if you don't have the preserved lemon, you can use two tablespoons of fresh lemon juice. It's not actually the same, but it is a great um, substitute. Now, almonds, and raisins, apricots, and lemons, those are grown in Morocco. Yes. Did you know that, Robert? I did most of it. Uh, my friend, her father was a jeweler in Morocco, but he had a huge 500-acre ranch. And they used to grow apricots and uh, lemons out there. I don't know about almonds, but wow. So to all of our listeners in i-net radio world, we've got honey, apricots, raisins, almonds, lemons. Woo! And now you're going to get into something even better here. The four cups, you tell them what we're going to put four cups of, uh, Marisa. Well, we have a choice because we have both items here. We can use four cups of sweet potatoes or four cups of pumpkin. Which one would you prefer? I like pumpkin. You know why? Because it's the holiday season, and we've had Halloween, Thanksgiving's coming up, and we're going to have pumpkin pie. Perfect timing. Oh, I love pumpkin I love pie. It. Yes. Yeah. Okay, so we're going to use the four cups of pumpkin. We have salt to taste. It's actually optional. And the extra, we have extra almonds just for garnishing. So we're going to heat the oil in the large candy. And like I said, if you don't have that, you can use a Dutch oven. We're going to add the onion and we're going to saute until translucent, and that is about five minutes. We're then going to add the garlic and then the ginger and saute for an additional two minutes. We're going to add the turmeric, the coriander, the cumin, the cinnamon, and we're going to stir and combine and saute. After that, we're going to add our vegetable broth our harissa, our honey, our raisins, almonds, and lemon juice. We're going to stir and combine, and we're going to bring to a boil. And then we're going to reduce the heat to low and cover and simmer for 10 minutes. And after that, we're going to add our sweet potato or our pumpkin. We've decided on pumpkin. Pumpkin, We're yes. going to stir, and we're going to reduce to simmer, and we're going to heat to low, and we're going to cover and simmer for about 25 minutes until the pumpkin is forked. Tinder. And that is your vegetarian tangine. So this we should actually be able to eat before the show is over because it should take about well, 25 minutes. Well, you've got to have a lot of ingredients on hand. Olive oil, onion, garlic, ginger, one pound of chicken wings. I suppose that's easy. And then you get to turmeric and cumin and coriander and cinnamon, chicken broth garbanzo beans, harissa, honey, apricots, raisins, almonds, lemon, sweet potatoes, or we like pumpkin. And wow, that is going to be really, really something. Wow. Yes. Well, the, the chicken wings would have been if we didn't make a vegetarian. But for this one, we're going to make the vegetarian. So the chicken wings we're actually going to use in our chicken tangine recipe. And yes, that that's one right. Yeah. We're, we're vegetarians on this one. I, there were so many ingredients. I just got going. I got on a roll here. And, and oh, now no, we're going to drink We're gonna drink tea throughout this, this dinner? No. Well, you have your mint cocktail as well, and there is another one coming up. Okay, so, we're going to get that. Okay. <laughs> now gonna you're going to serve... You can actually serve the tagine and the stew sort of together at the same time and the uh, the side dish of those grains? Huh. Yes, you can. You can. Wow, this is going to fill you up. Well, we're making a Moroccan feast, so whatever you want, you can try. And whatever you don't want, 
you well, know, what do they but, do? Do they eat in the? I think they eat in the middle of the day. I don't think they eat this at night. I think they eat it around between twelve and two, don't they? That's what I believe as well. Everything is like family style in the middle of the table, yes. and you know, everyone sits down and talk and have fun, and it's just a feast. You know, everyone enjoys everything. And I this is I fabulous just, food, but. Yes, you need to eat this in the middle of the day. I don't think yeah. you should go to bed an hour after having one of these dinners. I think you're going to need a nap after this. Yes. Day. Yes. <laughs> a lot of food. I think tomorrow we're probably going to have a wonderful lunch. I don't think we're going to be able to eat everything tonight. <laughs> but I think tomorrow we're all going to sit down, the whole iNet radio family, and we're going to have a wonderful Moroccan feast. I just want to so, tell our listeners that's Tagine, T A G I N E. And are you going to post these recipes? Uh, yeah, the recipes will be posted on Saturday and Sunday at MyohoSistersWebs.com. Okay. Everything will be listed for, for including the, the couscous. Yeah. Yes. Including both couscous recipes. Yes. Both All recipes. Three couscous the recipes. simple one Every and recipe the that we discussed hard today. One. Yes. And the mint yes. tea Every- we're gonna we're gonna disclose. Yes. Exactly. And yes. the mint cocktail. <laughs> yes. That would be there as yes. well. And we're so- serving <laughs> this family style. You're just gonna put these big containers on the table. That's right. Yes. I met with the family. We're gonna have a Moroccan feast tomorrow. Oh, this is and gonna I- be good. So kind of a family buffet style. This is gonna be good. This is gonna be a pre Thanksgiving <laughs> Celebrate celebratory <laughs> feast, but don't we have exactly. a salad to go with all this? You know, uh, Narisa yes. in America, we seem to be salad crazy. Mm. Yes, there is a salad to um, go with, and you know what? Salad is generally um, served before a Moroccan meal, so yes, it, it's sometimes it's raw, it's cooked, it's hot, it's cold, it's colorful, but Moroccan meals often begin with some kind of vegetarian friendly salad and there's one particular salad that i'm actually fond of that i make quite often it's a cooked salad made with eggplant tomatoes garlic olive oil and spices and it's a very common side dish to many meals and it's served and I dip with crusty bread. Mm. So as you can see, we have beautiful French bread on the table, and this is for this particular dish. So here we go. We have one large eggplant sliced and it's roasted. We have four large tomatoes, peeled, seed, and chopped. Three cloves of garlic, finely chopped. One third cup of fresh cilantro and parsley. We have a tablespoon of paprika, a t- tablespoon of cumin, and a teaspoon of salt. One eighth teaspoon of cayenne pepper, but that's optional. And we have one fourth cup of olive oil, one third cup of water, and we have lemon wedges, which is optional. We're going to mix all the ingredients in a large, deep skillet. We're going to cover and simmer over a medium to medium high heat for 30 minutes. We're going to stir occasionally and we're going to adjust the heat if necessary. Now, after this step is completed, we're going to use a spoon or a potato masher. I prefer a potato masher. And we're going to crush tomatoes and the eggplants. And if you like, you can use a small wedge of lemon can be added to the pan at this time. It's optional. I'm I'm not really for it, but like I said, it's optional. And we're going to continue to simmer and uncover for 10 minutes until the liquid is reduced. And then it can be stirred. And then after that, we're going to heap it in the center of a pan. And then we're going to serve it warm or cold with crusty bread. I personally prefer it warm, but in 30 minutes, you're going to have the best salad with crusty bread. It's a dip, but they call it a salad, but it's delicious. I've had it a few times. I love it, and I think you will love it, too. Well, this is not a typical American salad with iceberg lettuce and tomato and onion, and that's Morocco about it, I guess. Serve a typical iceberg or romaine lettuce salad. They're, they take salad to a whole nother level. Yes. Uh, yes, this so. is really more than salad. This is really, really something. Now, when you say, <laughs> excuse me, that you can su- uh, serve it cold, does that mean then you refrigerate it or you just let it sit for a while? You just let it sit for a while. Uh-huh. I've never, yeah. Yeah. I wonder what but, that would be actually, like if you refrigerated this and then ate it. That would be interesting. Wow. I don't know. I have not. Well, like I said, I prefer it warm. I've never had it cold. Yes. So I couldn't. 
And I also warm the, the bread up as well. Well, I love I, eggplant. What about you, Robert? I do. It's one of my favorites. It's very tasty. Robert and I were talking about zucchini squash yesterday. Mm -hmm. uh, you can cut mm -hmm. that a number of times during the season. It grows back very rapidly, Narisa. That's a wonderful oh, thing if you want to go make a little garden for yourself. Eggplant can be very plentiful, and I think it's very nutritious. So basically, the two basic ingredients, the vegetable ingredients, are eggplant and tomatoes. And then you have yeah. these spices, if we call everything here a spice. And that's it, yeah. olive oil and water. I mean, it can't get much easier than that. Simple. Served at the beginning of the meal. And it's 30 delicious. minutes is all it takes. And, 30 uh, minutes. And then you uh, crush and blend your tomatoes and your eggplant. Now, what kind of bread are we going to eat here? I mean, we just can't have any old Wonder Bread here, Robert. No. we got to have something pretty significant for this kind of dinner. I thought French bread would pretty will go pretty well with this dish. That's yeah. what I prefer. Bread. A crusty uh, bread, a, you say. A crusty bread. A nice, nice crusty bread. Nice now, we're going to serve so this before we get to the entrees. This really isn't an entree. This is a salad. Yeah, this is a salad. Yeah. So as soon as this is done, you and Robert can enjoy along with your mint cocktails. I mm, think you guys okay. need some little food in you. <laughs> I'm going to have another one. Pour, pour some more of that standard vodka, Robert. I got it. Yeah. Don't go too crazy on the tea and the mint. Let's just get the vodka in there. Now, uh, Narisa, how long do you think that the average uh, Moroccan family takes to eat this dinner in the middle of the day? This must be a two-hour two hour process. Most definitely. I think this is like a two-hour, maybe even three hours, because you have your salad, you have your dinner, then you have your dessert. Yes. So this is quality time with family and friends you're drinking your mint tea you're having your dessert you're laughing you're talking no cell phones no tv no outside distraction it's just all about enjoying each other's company now what do we treat as the soup here out of all this what well, what's considered the soup well we have a recipe for a lentil soup what we're going to cook in a crock pot yes. they have a traditional soup and um it's often served as a starter, mm. and the soup itself is as a meal. But for today, what we're going to do is we're going to do a Moroccan lentil soup, and we're going to cook the soup in a crock pot or a slow cooker if you choose. This is not something that we're going to eat today right now on the INET radio show. This soup is going to take about four and a half hours to cook. So I will give you the ingredients, and we'll get started. It's well, before you do that, I want to remind all of our i-net radio listeners that these, this sort of Berber soup is popular during Ramadan, which I would consider the high holy days for the Islamic religion and Muslim people. In fact, many people go to Mecca and Medina in Saudi Arabia for Ramadan. As you know, Morocco is a Muslim nation. And look at this, Robert. It's served at dusk. To break the fast. That's right. People fast for Ramadan. And what do they do? They have this soup. Wow. Wow. Okay. That's just for any of our Muslim friends. Anyone else? I guess you can have it whenever you like. So tell us about okay. this lentil soup, uh, uh, Narisa. Well, this lentil soup, as I indicated, um, we're going to cook it in the slow cooker. This particular recipe serves 12. Ooh. Yes. Serves 12. So this is a family style recipe. This is a meal in itself. It's going to take about 30 minutes to prep, but it is going to take about four hours to cook in the slow cooker. And um, back to the ingredients, we have two cups of chopped onions, two cups of chopped carrots, four cloves, which is minced, two teaspoons of extra virgin olive oil, one teaspoon of ground cumin, one teaspoon of ground coriander, one teaspoon of ground cumin, one, one fourth teaspoon of ground cinnamon, teaspoon of ground pepper, six cups of vegetable broth or reduced sodium chicken broth, choice is yours, two cups of water, three cups of chopped cauliflower, one third four cups of lentils, one 28 ounce can of diced tomatoes, two tablespoons 
tablespoons of tomato paste, four cups of fresh spinach, or one 10 ounce package of the frozen chopped spinach, thawed. One half cup of fresh cilantro and two tablespoons of lemon juice. And this is the ingredients that we're going to put in our beautiful slow cooker. We're going to combine the onions and the carrots and the garlic, oil, cumin, coriander, turmeric, cinnamon, and pepper in our slow cooker, which is um, about six quarts. We're going to add the broth, the water, the cauliflower, the lentils, tomatoes, and tomato paste and stir well until everything is combined. We're going to cover and cook until the lentils are tender. And like I said, it's going to be about four hours. And we're going to cook it on high or eight to ten. Yeah, we're going to cook it on high. And um, during the last 30 minutes of cooking, we're going to add the spinach. Just before serving, we're going to also stir in the cilantro and lemon juice. And like I said, this is going to take four hours. This I want to thin- warn all of our listeners from what I see. This is filling enough to be a meal in itself. Yes, this can stand on its own as a meal in itself. Boy, this is quite some dinner. This is more more like a four or five hour deal. This is really (laughs) something. I was wondering when they work. I don't know. Do these people ever work or do they just eat and drink, uh, Narisa? You know, eat and drink, that's work in itself. It, it takes a lot of energy to eat all these foods. Yes. So. <laughs> Narisa, you're not going to believe this, but we are running close to time here. Let's go to our dessert. Now, some I don't know if we're on the same page on some of these things. Are you going to okay. have dates stuffed with honeyed almonds, or do you have another delicacy set for us? Well, we have a choice. As you know, fruits... Is also referred to as dessert. So we can have dates stuffed with honey almonds, or you can have honey cinnamon orange, or you can have Moroccan macaroons. The choice is yours. Wow. Well, the uh, hold on a second here, because I'm looking at what you've got out here. Now, you do have some dates and almonds here, and you have a little honey here. Yes. That sounds pretty good. Yes. What's that all about? That okay. looks good. Okay. So I actually enjoy this one myself. It's date stuffed with honey almonds, and it's usually served at the end with mint tea or a very strong coffee. I prefer it with a very strong coffee. I so prefer we have 20 it with dates. the standard vodka. Okay. <laughs> okay, that's what makes you happy. Yes. So we have eight, 20 almonds and two teaspoons of honey. In a small pan, we're going to add the almonds and warm over a gentle heat until it starts to color. We're going to take it off the heat, and then we're going to add honey. We're going to let it bubble in the pan, and we're going to return to the heat and bring it back to bubbling until it starts to caramelize. Now, be careful. We don't want to burn ourselves with the almonds or the honey. So while they're still hot, we're going to tip the almonds onto a piece of bacon parchment and separate them carefully. They will be hot at this point. Bacon parchment? Bacon parchment paper. Oh. Yes. Oh, parch paper. Yes. Parch paper, yeah. yes. Like wax paper. And um, like I said, keep in mind the almonds and the dates, they're going to be very hot. And so we're going to lump them together and we're going to just allow them to cool until they become very sticky. And we're going to split the dates lengthwise and remove the stone. Add a sticky almond in the split of each date and lightly press the date together. And like I said, we're going to serve it with mint tea or strong coffee or vodka. But that is your date stuffed with honey almonds. Mm. And it's really delicious. That looks very, very good. I love it honey, does. honey, almonds, and dates. I don't see how you can go wrong with that. Now, I don't want to miss out. What's our final drink here, Narisa? We were going to have another drink, weren't we? <laughs> yes. Okay, well, there's another drink. It's called Tickled Pink. Pickled who? And tickled pink. 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 P I N K. Pink. Tickled pink. Tickled. You tickled me pink. Yes. <laughs> All right. And what we're gonna uh, do is just simply, it's a layering drink. It's an ounce of white creme de coco and an ounce of grenadine syrup, and we're gonna just lay, layer it with a spoon into a low bar glass. Instead. Now let me slow you down there. We've got white cream de coco, and what's the other ingredient? 
Grenadine syrup. Oh, God, cherry the juice like we used to get on a yeah. Shirley Temple. Oh, yeah. Yum, yum, yum. Oh, man, I those, love that. Those were the days. Yeah, and white cream to cocoa. This oh, is going to be good. something. So after yep. this, you will, be, you will be last in Tickle Pink. So, But that is our final cocktail. Well, you know, so I was a bartender, seriously, in college. And that would yep. be considered an after-dinner drink with the white cream de coca. No doubt about it. I uh, think a great thing to end it. Yes. yes. You got to love that. Now, you stir that, uh, Narissa? You shake it or what? No, no, this is layering. We're going to use the spoon, and we're just going to we're gonna pour in the creme de coco first, and then we're going to add the syrup layer. Or you can do vice versa. But the idea is you want to do the layer. Oh, it's we're gonna layer, yes, yeah. in a nice low bar glass, simple nice. to serve. So nice. we have Moroccan mint tea cocktail, we have tickle pink, and we have our traditional mint tea, and that is the beverage of choice for my Moroccan feast. Now you know, as as things worked out, we're gonna play a little song, a Moroccan song, to put everybody into the mood for eating and dancing and partying and singing. But we do have time for one more dessert. Do you still have another dessert recipe out there, uh, Narissa? I would love to do the honey cinnamon orange because this is actually a dessert that I enjoy myself. Mm. You can tell I like to use honey yeah. <laughs> when it comes to desserts. So we have two navel oranges, two tablespoons of honey, two teaspoons of ground cinnamon, fresh mint, le fresh mint leaves, and we're going to just use that for garnish. We've peeled the oranges. We're going to slice these oranges, thick slices. We're going to place on a serving platter, mix the honey and cinnamon in a bowl, and we're going to drizzle the honey mixture over the orange, and we're going to garnish with the mint leaves. And that is our dessert, honey cinnamon orange. Mm -hmm. Wow. Now, I realize we've only got three of us, plus Steve, who's over there in the corner producing this show with the headphones on. He's doing a beautiful job. He's over there eating a piece of cheese, Robert. American cheese, yes. And we're sitting over here eating the greatest delicacies in the world. Okay. Now, you can, of course, in one of these fabulous dinners, I guess you'd have a dozen people at this type of dinner, not just three people. Uh, you, would have a, you could have a variety of uh, desserts, a variety of drinks. We've got the salad. We've got the soup. We've got a number of entrees here. This is really spectacular. Now, people are going to want to taste all of these, uh, these dishes, Narisa. It's going to be hard to stop somebody from not having a little bit of everything, okay? So well, this is a – would you consider this a high-calorie dinner? Oh, absolutely. <laughs> yeah. <Yes. laughs> yeah. And what you had even had a third dessert. What was that called? What was that going to be? Oh, it, it was Moroccan macaroons. Oh, I it love kinda... macaroons. Tell me about that. I love those little cookies. Tell me, tell me. But we didn't even get a chance to do the quick Moroccan meatballs. <laughs> Wow. Okay. All right, we're give us the meatballs. The, um, give us, <laughs> give us, I'll well, do your best here. We got to go fast because I'm playing a little music here to end this show and put them in the mood. Okay. okay, here we go. Quick Moroccan meatballs. One tablespoon of olive oil. One package of ready-made beef or chicken meatballs. You know, those little ones that you see in your frozen department in your supermarket. One large onion, thinly sliced. We're going to have dry apricots. You're going to have them. One small cinnamon stick, and we're going to have um, one tomatoes, one garlic crushed, a uh, handful of coriander leaves, and we're going to chop. We're going to heat the oil in a large frying pan. We're going to fry the meatballs for about 10 minutes, turning occasionally until they're cooked. We're going to scoop out the meatballs, set aside. We're going to cook the onions for five minutes until it's softened. We're going to add the dry apricots, the cinnamon, the tomatoes, and the water to the pan. Bring a boil, simmer for 10 minutes. Remove the cinnamon stick, return the meatballs to the pan, and coat well with the tomato sauce. Serve with the almonds sprinkled on top. Mm. And that is your quick Moroccan meatballs. Moroccan meatballs. All right, Narissa and Robert, 
<laughs> this is unbelievable. And Narisa will be posting these recipes. Where again, Narisa? YohoSistersWebs.com. And they will be posted on Saturday and Sunday. And how do you spell that? M-Y-O-H-O-S-I-S-T-E-R-S. Mioho Sisters. Mm. W-E-B-S dot com. Beautiful. And it will be posted midnight Saturday and, and Sunday as well. Beautiful. Robert? Thank you for joining Narisa and me in the i-net radio studios. We want to thank all of our listeners around the world, from Moscow to Miami to Montgomery, Alabama to Malibu, California. Thank you for listening. Bye bye. All right, thank you. Bye, Narisa. Bye, thanks.